Welcome to yet another Excel video. The topics that we are going to explore in this video are how to create groups of data using the switch function, how to display percentages in a pivot table, and how to create a custom number format to display hyphens instead of zero percentages. Let's first have a look at the data and the expected outcome. In this Excel sheet, you can see five columns, a date, munitions type, number fired, event type, and time of event. This data represents different types of ammunition fired at different times on different dates and the event type includes two types, confirmed and no warning. Let's have a look at the outcome expected. We need to create a pivot table which depicts percentages of ammunition deployed, percentages of event types that have been deployed within a period of 24 hours at four hourly intervals. The intervals start at 3 a.m., so 3 a.m. to 7 a.m., so on, till 23 p.m. to 3 a.m. In the data that is given, though we have the event time, we do not have the time intervals categorized as four hourly intervals. And we are going to create a new column with four hourly intervals using the switch function and the hour function in Excel. Then we shall see how to create a pivot table like this. And in the pivot table, there would be a lot of zero percentages. We shall create a custom number format to display a hyphen instead of zero percentages. Let's go back to our data. In future, more rows will be added to this worksheet and we have to refresh the pivot table. In order to create a pivot table that can be easily refreshed, it would be a good idea to convert the list of data in this sheet into a table. In order to convert a list into a table, the easy way is to use the keyboard shortcut Control T. So let's select any cell in this list, press Control T. In this dialog box, the existing data has been selected automatically. Ensure that this box, My Table Has Headers, is checked. Click on OK. We've created a new table. As the table is selected, you can see a new tab table design and you can see the table name table 1. And whenever a table is created, the auto filters are automatically turned on. To turn off the auto filters, uncheck the filter button. It would be a good idea to rename the table. So let's rename this as T underscore data. Press enter. Now the table can be referred from any sheet in this workbook as T underscore data. Let's create a new column called intervals, wherein we are going to create four hourly time intervals. Let's type the column header as intervals. Press enter. In order to create time intervals, we are going to use the switch function. So let's type equals switch start bracket. Let's expand the formula bar. The first argument would be true. Type a comma or semicolon if you are in Europe. The second argument is value 1. In order to create the first group, we are going to check multiple conditions. That is whether the hour of the time of event is equal to 23 hours or if it is less than 3 a.m. Then it will fall within the group 2300 to 0300. As there are multiple conditions, we shall use the OR function. So OR. In order to extract the OUR portion of the time, we shall use the OUR function in Excel. So type OUR, start bracket. Let's select the cell E2, close bracket for the OUR function. If the OUR is equal to 23, type a comma. The second logical test is whether the hour is less than 3. So let's copy this condition, Control C, paste it here, Control V, and let's edit equals 23 and make it less than 3. Close the bracket for the OR function. If the hour happens to be equal to 23 or less than 3, then type a comma or semicolon and the time interval that should be displayed is within double quotes. As this is a text value, we shall use double quotes 2300 hyphen 0300. Close the double quotes, type a comma or semicolon. From now on, whenever I say comma, if you are in Europe, you have to use semicolon. So we have successfully created the first group. Now let's create the second group. In order to go to the next line, press Alt Enter. Now let's copy this condition, Control C, paste it here, Control V. From now on, we have to check only one condition. 
So if the hour happens to be less than 7, type a comma or semicolon, the group will be 0300-0700, close double quotes, comma. Now let's select this condition, control C and paste it here, control V. If this is less than 11, this should be between 0700 and 1100 comma alt enter to go to the next line control v to paste the condition if it is less than 15 1100 to 1500 is the group comma control v now if it is less than 19 1500 to 1900 is the group comma alt enter to go to the next line now let's create the last group control v if it is less than 23 hours 1900 to 2300 Let's type a comma. We do not have any other conditions. So let's close bracket for the switch function. If the time is equal to 23 or less than 3, we've already created a group 2300 to 0300. As we do not have any other condition, we can press enter and we find that the various time intervals are created. So 13 hours happens to be between 11 and 15, 1 happens to be between 2300 and 0300 and 0 that is 17 minutes past midnight happens to be between 2300 and 0300. So we've successfully created the intervals. Now we can create a pivot table. As we've already named the table, it is easy to create a pivot table in another sheet. So let's create a new sheet by clicking on this plus button. Let's rename the sheet as pivot table press enter. To create a pivot table, let's click on the insert tab, click on pivot table. In the table or range, let's type the table name which is t underscore data. We are going to create the pivot table in the existing sheet starting from the cell A1. Let's click on OK. We have a blank pivot table report and the pivot table fields list on the right pane. We shall select the munitions type, the event type, these two being non-numeric, they automatically go to the rows area in the pivot table. We want the time intervals across the columns, so we can drag the intervals and place them in the columns area, so we can see the different time intervals. We want to find the percentages of number of ammunitions fired, so let's select the number fired, and number fired being a numeric value, it automatically goes to the values area. Now we have to convert this into a percentage instead of numbers and before that instead of ammunition types and the event type showing as rows let's create two separate columns and for that let's click on the design tab change the report layout, expand the report layout and select show in tabular form. So we have the event type as a separate column and ammunition type as a separate column. We do not want the subtotals to remove the subtotals. Again under the design tab we can see subtotals here. Let's select do not show subtotals. Now you can see a pivot table with different time intervals across columns, the ammunition type and the event type and the number of rounds fired during different time intervals. We want to find the percentages of ammunition fired and the event types as well as the high threat period that is the time interval during which the highest percentage of ammunition have been fired. In this pivot table, in the rows grand total, you can see the total number of ammunitions of each type fired. And in the column grand total, you can find the number of ammunitions fired during each time interval. Let's convert the numbers into percentages. Let's right click on any number and in the context menu, expand show values as and select the second option which is percentage of grand total. In the IntelliSense, you may notice that the percentage of grand total would display a value as a percentage of the grand total of all the values in the pivot table report. So let's select this and we can see the percentage of ammunition fired in respect of each ammunition type as well as each event type. Let's close the pivot table fields list by clicking here. We can rename the sum of number fired as percentage fired, press enter. 
the percentage of each ammunition fired is shown as the raw ground total. 107 mm rockets fired happens to be 28.28 percentage of the total ammunitions fired. This is the highest percentage followed by 82 mm mortars and so on. To find the high threat period, we can examine the column ground total. We find that the highest percentage of ammunition deployed is 32.32 percent. That was in the time interval 1100 to 1500. There are only two event types, confirmed and no warning. So if you want to find out the percentage of no warning, you have 22.22 percent here and 2.02 percent here. So 24.24 percent was fired without warning the others were all confirmed you may notice that there are several zero percentages which may make it difficult to find non-zero values so let's create a custom number format whereby whenever the value happens to be zero percent we can display a hyphen instead of zero percent right click on any number in the pivot table in the context menu select the third option which is the number format Let's click on the custom format. In the custom format, at the moment, you see 0% under type. So let's edit this. Let's delete whatever is existing. In order to type a condition, that is, if the value is 0%, let's start a square bracket and type equals 0%. If this condition is true, type a space and within double quotes, type a hyphen because we want to display hyphen if the percentage is zero. Otherwise, if the percentage is not zero, let's type a semicolon 0.00 percent, which means the actual percentage. Let's click on OK and you may notice that wherever we had zeros, we have a hyphen. Hope you found this video useful. If you like this video, please click on the like button and share it with your friends and colleagues. Our channel has a lot of useful content, including 50 exclusive videos on Power BI PL300 certification exam. Please subscribe to our channel. While subscribing, please remember to click on the bell icon and to select the all option so that you shall receive notifications as soon as we upload new videos in our channel. We are very grateful to our subscribers, members and viewers for their continued support. See you again with yet another video. Have a great day.